Okay, I am going to be reading Numbers 22. It says, Then the people of Israel traveled to the plains of Moab and camped east of the Jordan River across from Jericho. Balak, son of Zippor, the Moabite king, had seen everything the Israelites did to the Amorites. And when the people of Moab saw how many Israelites there were, they were terrified. The king of Moab said to the elders of Midian, This mob will devour everything in sight like an ox devours grass in the field. So Balak, king of Moab, sent the messengers to call Balaam, son of Beor, who was living in his native land of Pithor, near the Euphrates River. His message said, Look, a vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt. They cover the face of the earth and are threatening me. Please come and curse these people for me because they are too powerful for me. Then perhaps I will be able to conquer them and drive them from the land. I know that blessings fall on any people you bless and curses fall on people you curse. So uh, the Israelites had left Egypt at this point. They're wandering the wilderness. They haven't gotten to the promised land yet. And God has told them that everyone, all of the adults, everyone who was 20 and older within a certain period of time would not see the promised land. And so they're wandering in the wilderness. God is providing for them. Moses is leading them. And they are, as they get into conflicts with other people, people groups, God is giving them victory over these other groups. And this person is, is uh, in fear that when he encounters uh, the children of Israel, that they will conquer him. So he calls on Balaam to curse them, this person Balaam. It says, Balak's messengers, who were elders of Moab and Midian, set out with money to pay Balaam to place a curse on Israel. They went to Balaam and delivered Balak's message to him. Stay here overnight, Balaam said. In the morning I will tell you whatever the Lord directs me to say. So the officials from Moab stayed there with Balaam. That night God came to Balaam and asked him, Who are these men visiting you? Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent me this message. Look, a vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt, and they cover the face of the earth. Come and curse these people for me. Then perhaps I will be able to stand up to them and drive them from the land. But God told Balaam, do not go with them. You are not to curse these people, for they have been blessed. The next morning, Balaam got up and told Balak's officials, go on home. The Lord will not let me go with you. So the Moabite officials returned to King Balak and reported Balaam refused to come with them. But Balak tried again. This time he sent a larger number of even more distinguished officials than those he had sent the first time. They went to Balaam and delivered this message to him. This is what Balak, son of Zippor, says. Please don't let anything stop you from coming to help me. I will pay you very well and do whatever you tell me to do. Just come and curse these people for me. But Balaam responded to Balak's messengers, even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord my God. But stay here one more night and I will see if the Lord has anything else to say to me. That night, God came to Balaam and told him, since these men have come for you, get up and go with them, but only do what I tell you to do. So the next morning, Balaam got up, saddled his donkey, and started off with the Moabite officials. But God was angry with Balaam for going. So he sent the angel of the Lord to stand in the road to block his way. As Balaam and two servants were riding along, Balaam's donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. The donkey bolted off the road and into a field, but Balaam beat it and turned it back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood at a place where the road narrowed between two vineyard walls. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it tried to squeeze by and crush Balaam's foot against the wall. So Balaam beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved further down the road and stood in a place too narrow for the donkey to get by at all. This time when the donkey saw the angel, it lay down under Balaam. In a fit of rage, Balaam beat the animal again with his staff. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. What have I done to you that deserves your beating me three times? It asked Balaam. You have made me look like a fool, Balaam shouted. If I had a sword with me, I would kill you. 
But I am the same donkey you have ridden all your life, the donkey answered. Have I ever done anything like this before? No, Balaam admitted. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the roadway with a drawn sword in his hand. Balaam bowed his head and fell face down on the ground before him. Why did you beat your donkey those three times, the angel of the Lord demanded? Look, I have come to block your way because you are stubbornly resisting me. Three times the donkey saw me and shied away. Otherwise, I would certainly have killed you by now and spared the donkey. Then Balaam confessed to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I didn't realize you were standing in the road to block my way. I will return home if you are against my going. But the angel of the Lord told Balaam, go with these men, but say only what I tell you to say. So Balaam went on with Balak's officials. When King Balak heard that Balaam was on the way, he went out to meet him at the Moabite, at a Moabite town on the Arnon River at the furthest border of his land. Didn't I send you an urgent invitation? Why didn't you come right away? Balak asked Balaam, but didn't you believe me when I said I would reward you richly, he said. Balaam replied, look, now I have come, but I have no power to say whatever I want. I will speak only the message that God puts in my mouth. Then Balaam accompanied Balak to Kiriath Huzoth, where the king sacrificed cattle and sheep. He sent portions of the meat to Balaam and the officials who were with him. The next morning, Balak took Balaam up to Bamoth Baal. From there, he could see some of the people of Israel spread out below him. Then Balaam said to King Balak, this is Numbers 23 now, it's a new chapter. Then Balaam said to King Balak, build me seven altars here and prepare seven young bulls and seven rams for me to sacrifice. Balak followed his instructions and the two of them sacrificed a young bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, stand here by your burnt offerings. I will go see if the Lord will respond to me. Then I will tell you whatever he reveals to me. So Balaam went alone to the top of a bare hill and God met him there. Balaam said to him, I have prepared seven altars and sacrificed a young bull and ram on each altar. The Lord gave Balaam a message for King Balak. Then he said, go back to Balak and give him my message. So Balaam returned and he found the king standing beside his burnt offerings with all the officials of Moab. This was the message Balaam delivered. Balak summoned for me to come from Aran. The king of Moab brought me from the eastern hills. Come, he said, curse Jacob for me. Come and announce Israel's doom. But how can I curse those whom God has not cursed? Or how can I condemn those the Lord has not condemned? I see them from the cliff tops. I watch them from the hills. I see a people who live by themselves, set apart from other nations. Who can count Jacob's descendants as numerous as dust? Who can count even a fourth of Israel's people? Let me die like the righteous, let my life end like theirs. Then King ba Balak demanded of Balaam, what have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies, but instead you have blessed them. But Balaam replied, I will speak only the message that the Lord speaks in my mouth, that the Lord puts in my mouth. God, I just ask that you would help all of us to only speak the message that you put in our mouths. God, help me to only speak the message that you put in my mouth in Jesus' name. God, stop me from cursing anyone that you have blessed in Jesus' name. God, I ask that you would help all of us, that you would help everyone watching this video to only bless those that you have blessed and to not curse anyone that you have, that you have blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Then Balak told him, come with me to another place. There you will see another part of the nation of Israel, but not all of them curse at least that many. So Balak took Balaam to the plateau of Zophim on Pisgah, Pisgah Peak. He built seven altars there and offered a young bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to the king, stand here by your burnt offerings while I go over there to meet the Lord. And the Lord met Balaam and gave him, the, gave him a message. Then he said, go back to Balak and give him my message. So Balaam returned and found the king standing beside his burnt offerings with all the officials of Moab. What did the Lord say? Balaam asked eagerly. This was the message Balaam delivered. Rise up, Balak, and listen. Hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man, so he does not lie. 
He is not a human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Lord, I thank you. Just I stop in this moment, Lord, to thank you that you are not a man and you do not lie. You are not human, so you've never changed your mind about me. You've never changed your mind about anyone you love. You've never spoken and failed to act. I thank you, Lord. You've never, ever made a promise and not carried it through. And I thank you that you are carrying through the promises that you've given to me. And you're carrying through the promises that you've given to everyone watching this video, to everyone who hears this, to anyone who hears the word of God. Thank you, Lord. You've never spoken and failed to act. Thank you for your faithfulness. Continuing in, in verse 20, Numbers 23, verse 20. Balaam said, listen, I received a command to bless. God has blessed and I cannot reverse it. No misfortune is in his plan for Jacob. No trouble is in store for Israel. For God, the Lord their God is with them. He has been proclaimed their king. God brought them out of Egypt. For them he is as strong as a wild ox. No curse can touch Jacob. No magic has any power against Israel. For now it will be said of Jacob, what wonders God has done for Israel. These people rise up like a lioness, like a majestic lion rousing itself. They refuse to rest until they have feasted on prey, drinking the blood of the slaughtered. Then Balak said to Balaam, fine, if you won't curse them, at least don't bless them. Then Balak said to Balaam, oh, I read that already. Fine, but if you won't curse them, at least don't bless them. But Balaam replied to Balak, didn't I tell you I only do what the Lord tells me to do? Then Balak said to Balaam, come, I will take you to one more place. Perhaps it will please God to let you curse them from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Mount Peor overlooking the wasteland. Balaam again told Balak, build me seven altars and prepare seven young bulls and seven rams to sacrifice. So Balak did as Balaam ordered and offered a young bull and a ram on each altar. By now, Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel. And that's still true. <laughs> so he did not resort. He did not resort to divination as before. Instead, he turned and looked out towards the wilderness where he saw the people of Israel camped tribe by tribe then the Spirit of God came upon him, and this is the message he delivered. This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of one who hears the word of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob! How lovely are your homes, O Israel! They spread before me like palm groves, like gardens by the riverside. They are like tall trees planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Their offspring have all they need. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. For them, he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose him, breaking their bones in pieces, shooting them with arrows. Like a lion, Israel crouches and lies down. Like a lioness, who dares to arouse her? Blessed is everyone who blesses you, O Israel, and cursed is everyone who curses you. King Balak flew into a rage against Balaam. He angrily clapped his hands and shouted, I called you to curse my enemies. Instead, you have blessed them three times. Now get out of here. Go back home. I promise to reward you richly, but the Lord has kept you from your reward. Balaam told Balak, don't you remember what I told your messengers? I said, even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord. I told you that I could say only what the Lord says, and now I am returning to my own people. But first, let me tell you what the Israelites will do to your people in the future. This is the message Balaam delivered. This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor, the message, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of the one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. I see him, 
but not here and now. I perceive him, but far in the distant future. A star will rise from Jacob. A scepter will emerge from Israel. It will crush the heads of Moab's people, cracking the skulls of the people of Sheph. Edom will be taken over and Seir, its enemy, will be conquered. While Israel marches on in triumph, a ruler will arise in Jacob who, do, who will destroy the survivors of Ir. Then Balaam looked over towards the people of Amalek and delivered this message. Amalek was one of the greatest nations, but its destiny is destruction. Then he looked over towards the Canaanites and delivered this message. Your home is secure. Your nest is set in the rocks, but the Canaanites will be destroyed when Assyria takes you captive. Balaam concluded his message by saying, Alas, who can survive unless God has willed it? Ships will come from the coast of Cyprus. They will oppress Assyria and afflict Eber, but they too will be utterly destroyed. Then Balaam left and returned home, and Balak also went on his way. Wow. I take from this that God can use anyone to speak. God can use anyone to proclaim his, his word. God can use anyone to proclaim his word. God can use anyone or anything as a messenger, even giving uh, a donkey, even giving a donkey the ability to speak. And uh, we also take from this that what God has said about us, what God decrees as his will, no one can undo. Lord, I just lift up everyone watching this video. God, I, I just lift up um, my life to you and I thank you that what you've declared over my life, I thank you that the word of God that you've spoken over everyone watching this video, what you've declared over your people, Lord, it cannot be undone. I thank you that you are not a man that you should lie. That you are not a man that you should lie. You are not human and you don't change your mind. God, I thank you that you've never changed your mind about me. You've never changed your mind about uh, the people of Israel. You've never, in, in your faithfulness to Israel, I can see that you are faithful. God, and I thank you that you're faithful to me and you'll never change your mind about me or anyone watching this video. And I see that, I see your faithfulness. Uh, I see the example of your faithfulness and your faithfulness to Israel and to the people of Israel. God, I thank you that you've never spoken and failed to act. God, I thank you that you've never spoken and failed to act. God, I thank you that your word is working in my life and your word is working in the lives of everyone watching this. God, I thank you that your word is working in the lives of your people in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that your word is working in my country, that your word is working um, in the countries of all the people of God who are praying for their countries and praying for their governments. God, I thank you that your word is working in my life and producing fruit. You have never spoken and failed to act. You've never made a promise without carrying it through. God, I thank you that you're carrying through your promises in my life and the lives of your people in Jesus' name. God, and I thank you that you've blessed me and no man, that no man, no one can curse me. What you've blessed, no one can curse. God, I thank you that no one can curse your people who you've blessed in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. And I thank you that no weapon formed against your people shall prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, and I just lift up Ukraine and Russia to you. I plead the blood of Jesus over Ukraine. God, I ask that you would put a stop to Russia in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, I ask that you would reach down from heaven and rescue Ukraine, that you would draw Ukraine out of deep waters in Jesus' name, that you would just reach down and, and, uh, and, and that you would just change history in Jesus' name and that Russia would be contained and constrained in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe if you did. Um, if you are interested in my Bible, I'm reading the New Living Translation by Tyndale, and I just bought it on Amazon. Just Google. Um, this is a New Living Translation Bible with red letters and large print. Um, if you're into large print, it's nice for me, but, um, you know, of course you can buy, uh, I have small print and large print New Living Translation Bibles, so they come in all different covers, all different colors, um, and all different font sizes. I'll catch you guys next time.